purchases 17 schools in the United Kingdom, including an elite prep school once attended by Princess Diana. Could this be a glimpse into the communist future of America's K-12 education? I'm Dr. Duke, she's Katie. Ni hao, our communist overlords. This is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show, the only program that keeps you educated on the craziness of packing K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Before we start, I want to ask everyone to please download our new Freedom Project media app. More than a thousand people have already downloaded it this week, and we can't wait to provide you with more content exclusive to the app over the next few months. Simply search Freedom Project Media in your app store and make sure you allow for notifications so we can inform you. 17 shows a week is what we're doing right now with more to come. All right, Katie joins us now with a look at the health of our republic. Last week I talked about boobs, the chest variety, but now I'm talking about another boob. Joe Biden. He's the president of the United States, and we are so screwed with our pants on, especially you, Texas. Let me explain. No time to waste. We are jumping right into the question of today, team. Which will last longer, Joe Biden or COVID? Let me know in the comments. And as always, please share this video, which is about to tell you just how much Joe Biden hates Texas. Now, on a serious note, I know you may be frazzled from this entire last year, so I want to reassure all of you, there's nothing to see here. Everything is normal. We are all united. Joe Biden said so. He has no idea what is happening, but he's pretty confident that he's still 10 years old and it's 1952. My mother would say, God bless you, son, no purgatory for you. As my mother would say, with the grace of God and the goodwill of the neighbors. Look at all the mom and pop. My dad used to say, everybody. Everybody's entitled to be treated with respect. As my mother would say, if half the things that occurred in the last campaign came out of my mouth, and she'd say as a kid, we'd wash my mouth out with soap. Get out the dove, the dial, and the palm olive. We've got some scrubbing to do in that mouth of yours, Joe. You know, as Forrest Gump's mama always says, stupid is as stupid does. And maybe we should be thankful he was even able to hobble to Milwaukee to hold that town hall last week that no one watched or even knew about. Mr. Roboto was in my home state, and I was like, whoop de doo But I better shut my mouth because we are told, or rather dictated, to see Joe Biden as the great uniter, the man who will restore this nation after so very orange man bad destroyed it, or something. Somehow, this codger is going to fix the greatest existential crises of our time, especially all 72 genders of them and the 107 pronouns that keep sputtering out the mouths of the most woke. Let's watch some of this uniting. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. You got more questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Sorry, wrong clips, but not really. And let's just cancel Joe right now because he had a word slip and it was a really bad one. And I'm eager to hear, I'm eager to hear. Nigger to hear next. <laughs> Nigger to hear next. Nigger to hear next. Just for that clip alone, please share this video. People need to know the real Joe Biden. The Joe Biden who will unite us, but who can't even give us speech less than one mile from the White House because two inches of snow impeded him. It's too dangerous for someone who has the best transportation in the world and who has lived in a northern climate all his life to travel less than one mile to do his job. Back to the basement. Or at least certainly not to Texas, where those Lone Stars legitimately don't know how to operate when snow arrives because they don't really need to until they did. And where was Joe to help them? I presume in the basement playing Mario Kart. He'd rather culturally appropriate Italian plumbers than play the role of president of the United States. Biden has shown these past few weeks how much he hates Texas. It's the largest state of the 48 contiguous states, so Joe is just doing his job to stop what he thinks is the big bully, and so he'll be a bigger idiot. I've been standing up to bullies my whole life. You're a lion dog faced pony soldier. You said you were, but you're, you're, now you gotta be honest. I'm gonna be honest with you. That made me as confused as Joe. Who's the bully? Answer, Joe. Look what he's doing now. 
in addition to sniffing all the children, he's ordered to have them put into those cages that he accused President Trump of using, even though it was his homie Barack and himself who originally built them. But don't you dare call them cages. They are migrant housing facilities for children, or a temporary reopening of overflow facilities. Jen Psaki, take it away. This is not kids being kept in cages. This is, this is kids. This is a facility that was opened that's going to follow the same standards as other HHS facilities. It is not a replication, certainly not. The, that's, that is never our intention of replicating the immigration policies of the past administration. But we are in a circumstance where we are not going to expel unaccompanied minors at the border. That would be inhumane. That is not what we are going to do here as an administration. We need to find places that are safe under COVID protocols for kids to be, where they can have access to education, health and mental services, consistent with their best interests. Our goal is for them to then uh, be transferred to families or sponsors. And just like Saki at her job, the Washington Post says, I can't say it's cages because, well, the Washington Post said so. And we need to trust Jen Psaki and the Washington Post and take Biden on face value because he told us that he likes kids. Everybody knows I like kids better than people. I so. saw a picture of you with your grandson recently. That's right. Yeah. Same mental capacity and all. Makes sense. But the media are covering for him and saying how wonderful it is that the Biden administration opened the influx care facility in Carrizo Springs, Texas. The same facility was closed under the Trump administration because the Democrats ranted and raved about how bad it was for teenagers to have come illegally into this country and to be separated from their illegal immigrant parents. But that was Orange Man, and this is just Old Man. We know the media is the ultimate protector of Joe Biden. Clearly, the smartest education doctor, Jill Biden, doesn't protect him, so someone has to. So they cover for Joe every chance they get, which is basically on an hourly basis. That's why, instead of reporting on how it took Biden like a week for him to do anything about the snowstorm in Texas, they were the Carmen San Diego's to report every facet of Texas Senator Ted Cruz's whereabouts. You do know that Cruz was supposed to use his superpowers to melt the snow. Instead, he just got the tears flowing from the woke scolds. Back to Joe, the same old man who couldn't attend his meeting in Washington, D.C. because of two inches of snow, also couldn't help the state of Texas, which got 400% more snow. And this time, all it would take is a simple phone call. At least we know Joe is consistently awful at his job. But on February 20th, when Biden finally did something, he was so very proud of himself. The simple fact that his tweet states, everything you can imagine is real, says it all. Now the help wasn't what Governor Greg Abbott asked for because Abbott wanted help for the entire state, but Biden could only help with about mm, 30%. And it's because he's only about mm, 30% there. It does go to a legit question that Biden has asked, and it's one I think that needs answering. I mean, this is the United States of America, for God's sake. We can't deal with that. Well, Joe, not with you in charge, it appears. As with Joe's mental state, it's getting worse by the day. How much longer will we last? I guess I'll rephrase my earlier question. Which will last longer, Joe Biden or this country? Until next time, God willing, stay healthy, America. Joined now by our international correspondent, Alex Newman. Alex, good to see you, and thanks for your time today. Great to be with you. Thanks so much, Duke. What in the world is it with the left and China? The left wants to convince us over and over and over again that they care about suffering, they care about misery, they, they, they care about oppressed peoples, they are f champions for minority populations in countries like America. And yet, when it comes to China and 1.2 million Uyghurs being into, uh, put in concentration camps, made to do forced labor, having their religion erased by the Chai Coms, you'd think there's no problem. Now we have a story here where the Chinese are buying up private schools all across the UK and then weaponizing them against the, the free status of society in Britain. What is going on here? It's pretty incredible. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this is the equivalent of like Nazi Germany coming in and buying up private schools in, in a civilized free country. It's absolutely insane. But it makes sense from the totalitarian perspective, right? The, the totalitarians in the United States and in Britain, just like the totalitarians in China, understand that the way to total power is by shaping the minds of young people. And so the Chai Coms now, they, they want to buy up these schools and not just brainwash the British, by the way. Um, these companies that are buying up these schools are run by well-known senior Communist Party officials. 
and they're turning them into global brands. So they're setting up uh, schools that have the same brand in different countries. And, oh, you get to go to an elite private British school. And by the way, it's owned by the most murderous dictatorship that's ever existed in human history. Step right up. Yeah, it is, it is staggering. And we have a situation now that Joe Biden is president in this country. One of the things that Donald Trump was doing was trying to remove the Chinese influence from American universities. And we know that he had some success. Under uh, the Trump administration, dozens and dozens and dozens of professors, some of them from uh, communist China and others, just Americans, had been exposed for sell, taking money from the Chinese, exposing American technology and American secrets to the communist Chinese. Uh, and of course, one of the first things Joe Biden does is to ask absolutely kill the investigation into the influence of China in American public universities. Yep. And uh, and we you know we have this massive problem. Now they're, they're coming back with their Confucius Institutes. And this is happening in the UK and it's happening in America. They're setting up little communist Chinese outposts on our universities. They're pouring in big funding into our universities. And they claim they're teaching Chinese culture, except they're not actually teaching traditional Chinese culture that existed for thousands of years. Instead, they're teaching communist ideology masquerading as culture. And uh, it's very, very dangerous. Can you imagine any can you imagine the Chinese, for example, allowing uh, capitalist Americans to come in and set up schools where we would uh, teach the Chicoms all about the glories of rebellion against tyranny, the wonders of free market capitalism, the God-given nature of our unalienable rights? They would absolutely freak, right? It would be absolutely inconceivable. And yet, under the guise of freedom, we're allowing mass murdering Chinese communists to come in here and brainwash our children on the glories and the wonders of the most murderous so-called ideology to have plagued man throughout his entire well, existence. you know that under the Biden administration, the single greatest threat facing America is not murderous Chinese communists who want to take over our children and conquer our way of life. It is white supremacists, right? <laughs> and, and as we know from Joe Biden, most white supremacy comes from retired soldiers and police officers. They retire from the force. They retire from serving their country. And right away, all that anti-American anti venom, all of that white supremacist venom, venom is felt in things like the Tea Party. This is literally the Orwellian argument that's being made by our government. And you mentioned about, can you imagine going into China and trying to set these things up? Well, you could see how the NBA caved. In order to open the Chinese markets, the NBA had to literally turn a blind eye to the fact that their sneakers for their hype, for LeBron James are being made. All this money they're making off of tennis shoes, these sneakers are being made by slave labor in China. And we had to pretend, the NBA is more than willing to pretend that the real problem here is not being allowed, Colin Kaepernick not being on an NFL roster. That's the real social justice issue, not the fact that the NBA has sold its soul to defend the communists for what, in what they're doing. Yeah, and the same thing's going on at the United Nations, right? Uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations just said the biggest threat to the world was white supremacy. I'm like, ah. you know, I know a lot of people, and I, I'm pretty sure I don't know a single white supremacist properly defined. You know, now they define math as white supremacy. So, you know, obviously some people have lost their minds. But legitimate white supremacy is an extinct, it, it's a dodo bird. It just, it's not around anymore. And yet here you have the most murderous regime in human history taking over countries, taking over people, taking over schools, and we just look the other way. After the break, Alex, let's talk about the consequences to this to this country if we don't fix this. Back again with Alex Newman. Alex, we boy talked about uh, a, a kind of explosive uh, expose that you've done about how the Chinese are buying up schools all across the UK, using them to indoctrinate kids into communist thinking. Uh, they already have outposts here in the colleges. You mentioned the Confucius Institutes, other ways that they have infiltrated the American university system. It's amazing, isn't it, that the uh, university chancellors and presidents who are so adamant about human rights, so adamant about social justice. Now, all the Chinese have to do is wave a few petrodoll petrodollars in the face of those chancellors and, oh, come, welcome to our campus. Bring your murderous regime here. Bring those Muslims who, who are making all those tennis shoes in concentration camps. Bring, we're, we're well glad to have you on campus, China. Yeah, it, it's so grotesque, and it exposes the total hypocrisy of the establishment. And and this applies on every issue, not just the education issue. You know, they, they pretend to be so concerned about racism, and yet all, all these phony journalists, and yet they're taking literally millions of dollars from communist China. Not a word, right? Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Washington Compost, all of them are receiving millions of dollars directly from communist China through China Daily 
a front for the Communist Party of China operating in the United States, registered as a foreign agent of China. Uh, the same thing is happening in every industry. The same thing is happening everywhere. And it's hard to believe, but it is what's going on. And if you look at the situation in the UK now, they've already bought 17 of these elite private schools. And, and these aren't just, you know, Joe Schmo private schools. These are the private schools that educate the aristocracy, the elites, the future uh, political leaders and business leaders of the UK. They've bought up 17 already. They've got their eyes on hundreds more. And of course, this is not just limited to the UK. It's a global problem. And at some point, we're either going to wake up and find ourselves uh, subjects of the communist Chinese, and that'll go well, kind of like for the Uyghurs. They literally have more than a million of them. They're raping them. They're torturing them. They're murdering them, uh, doing the same thing, cultural genocide in Tibet, doing the same thing, persecuting Christians, doing the same thing, persecuting the Falun Gong. Uh, we'll either find ourselves subjects of that dictatorship, or in the little bit of time we have left until that comes, we will wake up and say, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. You're not buying our schools. You're not buying our universities. You're not buying our, our companies, our ports, our technology. And in fact, we're going to stop subsidizing you and building you up. Yeah, let's not forget Taiwan and Hong Kong that's feeling the boot heel of China. And so we have a really catch-22 here. Uh, one of the reasons I think Donald Trump was so immediately uh, attacked, even before he became president, for relentless years of, of mostly garbage that was thrown at him, but not any of it stuck. I, I think a lot of it had to do with China. He was the first president in my lifetime who actually took a fairly hard line with China. And it was working. He was actually pushing back. We were exposing Chinese uh, agents here in the universities. We were, we were tracing the money trail from China to our universities. We were beginning to report on the toll that was being taken on American liberty by what was happening in the schools. And of course, Joe Biden's here now and he's cut that all off. And it's even worse than this. You look at the world, the so-called globalist institutions in this world, the United Nations is 100% backing China. Right? It, doesn't, it, it, it refuses to condemn any aspect of what China's doing. You've got the World Health Organization, which is supposed to be a neutral organization. Donald Trump, Trump rightly cut funding to it. Biden gave it right back, and what have they done? They're, they're playing fast and loose with a report about COVID, right? And we heard from the WHO, oh, we, we went into China, China co complied. This had nothing to do with man-made viruses. This was all an accident. And now over the last couple of weeks, it's leaked out, right? Well, actually the Chinese didn't give us what we wanted. Actually, they wouldn't let us access this. Actually, they didn't give us the information, the documents that we, we asked for. And yet the World Health Organization, even the CDC, want to protect these global, the global organizations are on the side of China, not the side of America. And now that America under Biden is surrendered to China, who's left to fight this? Yeah, that's exactly what's going on, Duke. I mean, look at the Paris Agreement. That's a good example. They pretend like the Paris Agreement has something to do with climate change. Nothing whatsoever. I was in Paris at the UN summit where this was negotiated. And incidentally, I was followed around by a Chinese spy who was snapping pictures of me. True story. Um, but what the Paris Agreement does is it shuts down the American economy because under the Paris Agreement, the U.S. has to slash carbon dioxide emissions by like 28 uh, percent. Meanwhile, communist China promised to do absolutely nothing except continue growing their CO2 emissions and continue building more coal-fired power plants until maybe 2030, maybe beyond. So what's going to happen? American factories are going to shut down. American prices and electricity is going to skyrocket. Companies are going to leave here. They're going to go build factories in China. The U.S. economy will suffer. Americans will lose their jobs. The American government will lose tax revenue that we needed to fund our military. All of that will go over to communist China. He couldn't do a better job if he was an actual member of the communist Chinese party. And don't forget shutting down pipelines since he's become president. Gas is up $1.25 a gallon. And that's good for the Biden administration. That's not an issue. It is time for some real education. Welcome team to our final day tribute to the great, the Netherlandish painter Jan van Eyck. We've made it. Today on Instant Classic, we consider the Lamb of God panel from the Ghent altarpiece. And take a look before we go to this, Mike, go back to that previous screen where you see an image of Van Eyck in that red turban. You gotta be a really, really, really good painter to pull off that red turban. And I'll be darned, he does it. The Ghent Altarpiece by Jan van Eyck is a masterpiece, and this is one of my favorite parts of it. At the very center of the altarpiece is this Lamb of God image. And so you have 
the Lamb of God, and you, we'll get a close-up on it in a moment. In fact, go to the close-up. Right there you have the Lamb of God on the altar, surrounded by the angels, with the cross of Christ facing it. And this is beautiful. This is the altar. This is the creation of the sacrament of the Eucharist in Roman Catholic circles, right? You have, remember it was uh, in the Gospel of John when John the, Baptist, John the Baptist sees Jesus coming to be baptized. He stops, he points to Jesus and says, that is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That is the sacrificial animal who will be offered up, the innocent, the unsullied, the pure, the sinless victim that will be offered up on an altar for the sake of all of us sinners from all time in history to come and from all time before, this alone is going to be able to allow us to conquer death, to be reunited with God after death. And so the, the, the strongest figure who ever walked this earth is the creator of this universe. If the Son of God entered the world in human flesh and blood to become a sacrifice on an altar, then that means that Christ, as he walked the, this earth, was the strongest, most powerful creature to ever set foot on it. And yet, how does he choose to be? The king of kings, the prince of peace, Christ himself, literally becomes a sheep. Not a wolf, not a predator, not an alpha, not a king, not an emperor, not a conqueror, not a general. He becomes a sacrifice. And there is the Lamb of God, and you can see that his breast has been pierced and that he is bleeding into a chalice. And here you have the symbolism for the body and blood of Christ that he promulgated at the Last Supper, and that is the hallmark of the Eucharist in Roman Catholic theology. Now, if you step back from this altar, you will see the, the Lamb of God at the center. You will see the angels around him. Then you will see on the back left and the back right major figures from the priest on the left-hand side, male, on the right-hand side, female. And then in the foreground, you see, among other things, monks and beggars, the poor, those who were the primary ministry group that Christ came to save, the weak, the suffering, and the forgotten. And it's just a gorgeous landscape. You see the beauty of the trees. Uh, this is clearly the new Jerusalem. This is clearly uh, an adoration that is taking place once Christ has come again as king, the Lamb of God who sheds his blood. Uh, this is the holy angels, the, the saints, the martyrs, the blessed poor are all here to participate, not figuratively, not metaphorically, but literally. Uh, somebody once, we got an email from somebody who said this week, be careful of overusing the word literal, Katie, Duke, and Duke. Okay, fine. But this is a literal instance. I think we can use the word very, very accurately. That literally hurt me. All right, just a quick reminder to please download our brand new Freedom Project Media app. You're going to get access to, again, 17 new shows a week, plus our entire library of content. Simply search for Freedom Project in your app store and make sure you allow for notifications. And if you're a fan of this show, and you should be, please consider a one-time tax-deductible donation to support our Patriot Club, and we're going to send you a signature tumbler as just a little thank you. All you have to do to sign up is visit patriotclub.us. That's patriotclub.us. Now we want to take just a moment to show some love to our Patriot Club members. And today we're giving a shout out to Diane from Winfield, Illinois. Thank you, Diane, for supporting us. Diane, you go girl. You go girl. And if this is the Diane, I know that it is. A big shout out to Masaccio as well. And that's going to do it for this show. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. Until next time, stay educated, my friends. Thank you.